This is the heart of a full grown 18 pound turkey and using ultrasounds, x-rays and CT scans we are going to be comparing the similarities between the human heart and the avian heart. And as a bonus we will see if we can inject some fake blood back into the heart to see what actually happens when this powerful organ contracts. And more importantly we're going to be learning the basic anatomy of the primary organ in the mammalian cardiovascular system. Welcome everyone to the Homeschool Science Club. This is going to be our second video in our anatomy series. If you haven't seen the first video that dealt with the anatomy of the human eye, you should definitely check that out and remember the worksheet that goes along with the episode that is free to download on our website. But today is all about the human and the bird heart, so let's get started. there are many similarities between the bird heart and the human cardiovascular system. Birds, like mammals, have a four-chambered heart. There are two chambers on top called the atrium and there are two chambers on the bottom called the ventricles. These four chambers work together to ensure that blood coming into the heart with less oxygen leaves the heart with plenty of it. One key difference between a bird heart and the human heart is the size of the heart relative to the size of the person or the bird. In a human, typically, the bigger the person, the bigger the heart is going to be. It's actually the opposite in birds. The smaller the species of bird, the bigger the heart relative to its overall mass is going to be. Take for example the hummingbird. The hummingbird has one of the largest hearts proportionally to its size relative to its larger bird counterparts. And it's thought that that is the case because a hummingbird needs a large and very efficient heart to pump all the blood as fast and efficiently as possible so it can maintain such a high energy level during its flight. Let's take a look at the right side of the heart. Keep in mind, when looking at x-rays, CT scans, or even pictures in an anatomy book, they often appear in reverse as if you're looking at them in the mirror. So looking at this x-ray, this is the right side of the heart, and this is the left side of the heart. So when you talk about the right side of the heart, you're talking about the right atrium on top and the right ventricle down below. These two chambers receive the blood coming back from the body after the body's organs and tissues have removed as much oxygen from the blood as they can. You can see as I've cut through the cardiac muscle of the turkey heart that it opens up into a hollow cavity. And that's basically what the right atrium and the other chambers of the heart are. Empty cavities that allow blood to come in and then be pumped to their final destination. The blood enters the right atrium and then is pumped into the right ventricle which then pumps the blood into the lung. When the right ventricle contracts, the blood leaves the heart through these pulmonary arteries that you can see are also present in the turkey heart here. You can see this pumping motion when looking at an ultrasound of the human heart. Once the blood flows through the lungs to receive more oxygen, it then returns to the heart in the left atrium, which then pumps the blood into the left ventricle. The left ventricle then contracts and pushes all that blood out of the heart through the aorta to the rest of the body. And this is a CT scan showing what the largest blood vessel in the human body, the aorta, looks like as it leaves the heart and then travels downward through the chest and abdominal cavities. What is interesting is the heart muscle in the left ventricle is much bigger than the right ventricle because it has to pump with much greater force to get the blood through the body, whereas the right ventricle only has to pump blood to the lungs which are essentially right next to it. You can see the difference even in the turkey heart here as the left ventricle muscle is much larger than that of the right ventricle. To see if we can demonstrate how this actually works, we're going to pump fake blood into the left ventricle and then squeeze the heart to see if we can demonstrate where the blood actually exits the turkey heart. And getting some fake blood, of course, is as simple as adding a few drops of food coloring to some water. And then you just take your syringe and fill it with your new fake blood. And if you want to go the distance like we did, you can pick up a syringe and needle at any local medical supply company. Now, if you're interested to find out where we actually got a turkey heart, let's just say I really enjoyed our New Year's Eve dinner this year. And before we move on to the demonstration, if you're really not interested in dissecting turkey hearts or doing what we did here, but are interested in teaching their kids human anatomy for your homeschooling, then I really recommend this book here. It's the Oosborn Complete Book of Human Anatomy. At $14.99, it's a really good investment. It's beautifully illustrated with pictures of the human body. It has very interactive and friendly text that are clear and easy to read, and it definitely explains how things work at an elementary and middle school level with simple explanations. Where did I get such an eloquent description? It says so right here on the back. That being said, we've been using it for a while, and it is a great book. If you're interested in something like this, I'll put a link in the description down below. Getting back to the demonstration, to keep this as clean as possible and to not have to worry about bacteria and sanitation, especially with the kids involved, I ended up cooking the turkey heart. And in 
unfortunately, it was either during the process of the cooking or how the turkey company ended up removing the turkey heart to begin with that ultimately ruined what I was hoping to be a pretty neat demonstration. As we were injecting our fake blood in into the turkey's ventricle, it began to seep out around other areas of the heart that had been punctured or cut during the removal process, instead of actually going out the aorta or pulmonary arteries like I had hoped. So with that part of the demonstration not working out exactly according to plan, now it was just time to dissect the turkey heart and learn as much as we could about it. As we open the chambers of the turkey heart, you can see there are fibers attached to the chamber walls inside the ventricles and the atrium. Those fibers actually have particular names and very specific purposes, and we're going to go in much greater detail in a subsequent heart video down the line on our channel, so be sure and subscribe if you haven't already. So that's it for this week's video. Unfortunately, filling the turkey aorta didn't have the specific effect that we were hoping for, specifically the effect I was hoping for, but hopefully with the addition of the CT scans and ultrasounds, you were able to see the idea. There will be other anatomy lessons in the future on the channel. Don't forget, most of our videos like this one will have a downloadable worksheet that goes along with it, and you can go to our website and download it and other things for free that will hopefully help you with your educational, specifically homeschool educational needs. The forecast where we live in South Carolina is actually calling for four to eight inches of snow to be followed with an inch of ice. So assuming we have power over the next couple of days, we will get to work on the next video for next week. Hope you have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you then.